Del Salar. Keep her in your loving memory. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name through Christ our Lord. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so path through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man from Baal Shashah bringing food from the fruit, first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elijah said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servants said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He said it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Now we'll be singing 820 in Wonder, Love, and Praise. Stephanie will play it one more time through, and then we'll join you. Repeat in unison Psalm 145, 10 through 19. All your works praise, praise you, Lord. you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in his word and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fail. 
and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him and to all who call upon him faithfully. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be fulfilled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish, accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and the Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the singing of the gospel hymn, Break Thou the Bread of Life. It's the insert in your bulletin today. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him 
because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Now the Passover and the festival of the Jews was near. When he looked up and he saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his, his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of a strong wind. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, amen. You may be seated. Last Saturday, not yesterday, but last Saturday, Tom and I hosted a family reunion at our home in Delafield. It was so nice to see all the people we love from 1 to 91 years old. It was great. It was really nice. We don't have a big number of children in our families, which is why it was really, really nice to have seven kids among us. At this reunion, the adults, you know how this is, gathered around the food and various conversation topics. And then the small group of very active kids had fun. <laughs> They had fun with the dogs and in all the closets and in the basement and out in the yard. And they showed us just how to enjoy a beautiful summer day. And so after, after everybody left, after all this activity, as Tom and I were finishing the dishes, we couldn't stop talking about these incredible kids. 
you know, perhaps they were all on their best behavior. That never happens. <laughs> but throughout the day, throughout the day, they were polite. And they were kind to each other. And they were creative and they were curious. And they only broke one cup, which is great. <laughs> and we said to each other, almost at the same time, that's a great sign. That's a great sign. We talked about what we saw in these kids. And we talked about our hope in the future. And I know many of you have had that experience. We often say, that's a good sign when we see the potential for good things in a young person or even an older adult. Today's passage from the gospel, you're not going to believe this, but today's passage from the gospel according to John, is full of signs, signs of good things to come. That's what it's all about. And like many of you, I love it. I love this passage. This passage is often called the story of the feeding of the 5,000, right? You know that. <clears throat> it's often also called the story of the loaves and fishes. And it's found in all four Gospels, all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the version that we just read today was written around the year 90. And the author is clearly familiar with the other versions of this story, which is probably why it's told in a little bit different way. This version from John's Gospel has a very particular purpose. It points to what we often call the miracles of Jesus. But here, you don't see that word. Here, the miracles are called signs. Signs. Signs are the wondrous things that happen in this story which point to God's love for humanity. The signs are the miraculous things that point to God's love for humanity. And there's another main idea in, in this big, long reading. And that's that this passage illustrates how people often can't figure out how to respond to God's love. Difficulty with that. So here in this entire big long passage for today, we mostly read about bread and fish, but remember the whole idea is that it's about signs. And from my count in this passage, there are at least six signs of good things to come. Six counting, I'll name them. First, we read in this story that the people have followed Jesus walking to the other side of the Sea of Galilee to be with him. Remember that Jesus is saying and doing these things that bring people health, that bring people wholeness. That's why they're following him. His words and his actions are inspiring He's offering a whole new way of living life, hope in the future. This is a great sign. And the people respond by following the sign, by following Jesus. So this first sign in our passage today is a sign of good things to come that people are following Jesus. As the story progresses, Jesus walks up into a mountain intending to rest and pray with his disciples. That's why he goes up into the mountain. But then he realizes 
people are following him. People are following him up to the mountain. And they gather around him. This is the second sign of good things to come. It's in his question. Jesus asks a really important question. And I don't believe it's said with a bit of snark. Jesus asks, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? Where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? These are words of a good host. That's what they are. They're words of a good host. These are words of hospitality. These words are a good sign. Third sign of good things to come is when one of the disciples looks to a child who has five loaves of bread and two fish. The child. The child's food of bread and fish is, you know, it's really humble, but it's very nourishing. It's a metaphor for God's love. The bread and the fish are a metaphor for God's love, God's abundant love. And the fourth sign that we see in this passage is the way Jesus uses the child's food to feed 5,000 people. That's a good sign. There's enough food for everyone. No one's left out. No one goes hungry. And the people respond by eating. They eat a lot of food. They eat a lot of food. It's a miracle of God's love that is available to all people. Jesus, this host of a fabulous picnic, is making it very plain that this food is nourishment for Jews. This food is nourishment for Gentiles. This food is nourishment for people without any faith. This food is nourishment for people who are searching. This food is nourishment for people who ask really hard questions. The spiritual food of bread and fish is for everyone. So the first part of the story ends really beautifully. It ends with a fifth sign of good things to come. And that's in the 12 baskets of food that are left over. The 12 baskets of food, the fragments that are left over from feeding 5,000 people, is a great sign. Talk about exceeding expectations. 12 baskets. So in this story, you would think that with all this abundance, abundance, all this love, people would be grateful. People would be grateful. But clearly, people can't always figure out how to respond to God's abundant love. So what do they do in this story? Well, we read, kind of goes back. We read this line, the people want to take Jesus by force to make him king. The people want to take Jesus by force to make him king. Huh, that's not quite the right response. There's a disconnect. So Jesus withdraws to the mountain. He leaves. He leaves by himself. And in doing this, he's showing the people that he's nothing like a king they know. 
He's not a self-centered autocrat like the kings of his day. He's not like the kings who take advantage of people for their own gain. Jesus recognizes what the people are doing. They want a ruler. They want a strong man. They want a king. But he makes it clear that he will never be that kind of king. So the story continues. And we see that even the disciples respond to Jesus without much thought. They've been waiting a long time. They've been waiting for him to return from the mountain. But we see that the disciples give up. They give up. They get frustrated. They get really bored. They might throw up their hands. And then they get in the boat. And they head out. Now let's remember that this story, this big, long, beautiful story, about feeding the 5,000 people is all about the extravagance, the abundance of God's love. That's what Jesus is teaching. So what does Jesus do when he sees that the disciples have left him? He walks out to them on the water. He walks out to them on the water. This is the sixth sign of good things to come. It's a sign of hope for humanity and for the world. It shows us that God will find us. God will find us. This is the message of this wonderful passage from John's Gospel. That God will find us, and God loves us unconditionally, no matter how we respond. Even if we think we want a king, even if we think we want to give up on God, God loves us without exception. In our need for healing, in our hunger for answers, in our poor choices, in the angry words that we regret, in our disappointment, in our grief, in our frustration, in our boredom, in our embarrassment, and in our pride. This is what Jesus is saying in this gospel passage, that God will always feed us, that God will always find us. This is not just sermon speak. It's not sermon speak. Right now, the God of love is offering more love than we can possibly imagine and meeting us right where we are, right in this church, right in our daily lives. And some of us don't know how to respond. We don't know what to do with all this love. We don't know what to do with such an astonishing gospel message, with God's divine generosity. We just we can't handle it. We just don't know what to do. Some of us want a king. Some of us want more information. We're uneasy about the future. We just don't know what to do. Some of us can't reconcile the scenes of this story with the scenes of our life in 2024. But that's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're here because this is good news. And we know how to respond. This gospel message is so powerful 
Because in it, this is the nugget. Every day is a new day. And we can begin again. There is more than enough spiritual bread and spiritual fish. There is no scarcity. God's love is overflowing. And there's every reason to have hope in the future. Jesus said, you read this, I read this. Jesus said, do not be afraid. Essentially, don't buy into fear. Don't be afraid. Today we can respond to God by sharing the Eucharistic meal. That's a response. We can respond to God and God's generosity by sharing the love that we are shown. We can respond by leaving this place today, by leaving this church building today with strength and hope and in peace. And let us pray that others will see in us, will see in us a sign of good things to come. Amen. We stand as you are able, and let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers of the people. We open our hearts, actions, and voices to God's presence in our lives, saying, may we feed your, your people, people with abundance, with abundance of, of love. We pray for your church and our leaders, Michael, our presiding bishop, Sean, our presiding bishop-elect, Bishop Matt, Mother Esther, Deacon Terry, and Pastora Loretta that we may all go out to share Jesus' love in our actions and voices. May we feed your people with abundance of love. We pray for your body of Christ at St. Aidan's as we are called to be your light and loving presence through faith, sacrament, and outreach. May we feed your people with abundance of love. We pray for all who experience lack of food, lack of faith, 
and lack of security in our community, our state and nation, and this world, that they may find comfort and safety and that we may share with them your overflowing cup of hope and peace. May we feed your people with abundance of love. We pray for this nation, our public leaders, and those vying for election, for wisdom, tolerance, and patience, that their actions may lead to peace, concord, and reconciliation. May we feed your people with abundance of love. We pray for all those who cannot be with family and loved ones, and those who feel lonely or are estranged, that we might share your comfort, and together we are bound in love. May we feed your people with the abundance of love. We pray for all who have died, and give thanks for your grace through them, as they now abide in you. May we feed your people with abundance of love. Let us open our hearts to allow God's presence to shine through us to this seemingly broken world, that our neighbors, through us, experience God's bountiful love, peace, and joy. In our prayers today, we hold the family of Sandy Lenz, and friends, all those gathered here yesterday for the funeral and others who were not uh, part of the gathering. We hold in our prayers Ted Del Salar, the passing of his wife, Connie. We hold in our prayers all those listed on our prayer list. We ask for healing for Peter Hoffman and Fred Patton and many others. We pray for all of those friends and family who we hold in our heart. I invite you to offer your prayers aloud or in silence. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, creator Christ and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet one another. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for everything lately. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Sam.
may be seated. Um, Deacon Terry is not here today. He is um, teaching, Dan he's a, at a conference or convention of, uh, oh gosh, Lorraine, what is the convention? It's in Canada, yeah? <laughs> dancers, Scottish dancers. Scottish country dancers in Canada. Um, so he's actually going to be gone, to, uh, is gone today and next Sunday. But uh, I think he's probably having a ball. But I know he misses you. So I know you'll get together soon. Um, so yeah, yesterday we had a, a, a good-sized funeral here for Sandy Lenz. Um, and before we go to birthdays and other announcements, uh, before I forget, there are plenty of flowers here. And uh, you're invited to take as much as you like, whatever you like. Um, these, are, these are flowers for the members of this church. So please, please help yourself to flowers, summer flowers, beautiful flowers. We have a couple of birthdays. Um, we've got, uh, well, a birthday and an anniversary. So we've got one birthday. Um, Sandy Tracy is celebrating a birthday today. And I know that there are, there are some more um, too. But let's pray for all of those who are celebrating a birthday. Anybody here who I'm missing? Celebrating a birthday? OK, all right. Let us pray for everyone who's celebrating a birthday. Summer birthdays, got to love them. All right, let's pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we have a special anniversary today. Eileen and Michael, would you like to come forward and let us pray for you? August 1st anniversary how many years 15 years wonderful wonderful all right let us pray for michael and eileen and all those celebrating anniversaries let us pray O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Got to love it. <laughs> OK. Nice. Oh, I, I love love. I know, right? <laughs> All right, so I was um, um, not just asked, but um, kind of pleaded to make this announcement. Please stay for coffee hour. <laughs> we have lots of food and um, food to share and food uh, abundant. This is like loaves and fishes, I think. It's just abundant, abundant food. So please, please stay for coffee and uh, lots of absolutely wonderful food uh, at our coffee hour today. You see um, the announcements in the bulletin, and Wednesday we are meeting for our, our book discussion, so um, please join us on Wednesday. Um, and next Sunday you see the coffee hour forum, um, speaking in tongues, I'm just finishing that up. It's just kind of another session of language that we use in the church that's unusual. We kind of use it, we throw it around, and we don't always define these terms. So um, we're going to have another handout and some other uh, uh, definitions of some of that language. And the back to school group, the outreach uh, committee is working on the backpack distribution and is really working hard in gathering those backpacks. So please um, participate in that um, as you like. That would be great. Um, Today we also have a special prayer, and Samantha, can you hand that to me from the bulletin? We have a prayer that was distributed to all of our churches in the new, thank you, <laughs> in the new diocese, yep. And um, that, yep, that's it, that's it, yep. Um, 
it's a handout, a little leaflet that you will see every one of our churches in the entire state of Wisconsin, all Episcopal churches, have this in their bulletin today. Um, and the, the little leaflet here gives you a little bit of history about the Episcopal Church in Wisconsin. Um, actually, it's the, the Milwaukee Diocese in particular, just to kind of give you some background about where we come from and kind of where, you know, where we're headed. Um, and we're headed to, uh, again, to doing things as a whole state, um, as a, a reunified diocese. So our, our new diocese is the combination of the three dioceses, Milwaukee, Fond du Lac, and Eau Claire. Um, and they have their, I shouldn't say they get this exact one, everyone has their own version, but they all have the, the statement that describes us coming together. So let us pray. I'm going to ask that we all pray this together, the prayer for a reunified diocese. You'll find it at the back of the leaflet. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for your grace and wisdom during our time of discernment, allowing us to hear your call for the church in Wisconsin. Thank you for keeping our ears, hearts, and minds open to one another in order to always seek your will and discern your vision and mission for the church. Grant us now, almighty God, that same grace and wisdom to fulfill your mission as a reunited diocese of Wisconsin. Strengthen us in unity and faith to be that church, that church that opens its doors to all people shares the good news with all people, and brings the love of Christ to all people. Let us be Christ in Wisconsin and in the world. All this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Are there any other Donna questions? Let me get this to you. We did such a good job of making sure that we put August 25th on the calendar for St. Aidan's Day, and then we've kind of forgotten that that day is taking place rather quickly. Um, so I have a sign-up sheet for uh, a potluck, but we do need some people to help organize it. So if you are at all interested in helping with that, let me know during coffee hour or whatever. I think last year we made a good decision in putting up a tent. And we'd like to do the same thing again this year. So we need some organization on that part. Um, we have always provided meat um, and have grilled it. So if we want to continue to do that, I need grillers. Or we can just have a super potluck. So let me know what your preference is on that. So I will put the sign up for that. We still have a few weeks, but you know, um, it'll be here before we know it. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Please rise for our offertory. It is in the Wonder, Love, and Praise book, number 761.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to the God of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death and resurrection and ascension, we offer these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the blood of Christ. Bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, 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 the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, O oh God, send us out into the world to do just to do that love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love, Make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God who made us, who loves us, who travels with us, be with you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 304, I Come With Joy to Meet My Lord. Let us now go forth into the world rejoicing in the spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.